Hey, thanks for coming back. In a previous video, we uh, put some handles on this skinning knife for a buddy of mine, and it's got some G10 liners in there. If you didn't catch that video, go back, watch that real quick, and in this one, we're gonna make a Kydex case for it. Now, before we get started, I wanna say that Aaron Goff makes a great tutorial on your Kydex sheaths, and that's kind of where I started learning. I'm gonna show you how I do mine, but I would definitely recommend you go and find his video and see how he does his. so you got to heat them up you can put them in any toaster oven uh, but i bought this big one that has an, a nice opening i can put several layers in and uh, i've customized it. all of this is completely new because they're not famous for being super accurate so i've completely redone one to my liking and you can find plenty of videos on that on how to do it how to wire it up but uh, maybe I'll do a future video of it as well I wrapped the whole thing with insulation on the inside and I put a new thermocouple in there I've got a new PID controller power switches this just came with it so I went ahead and put it on there in a way for the heat to escape now this press that I've built is really simple it's just got a hinge on it right there in the middle some scrap pieces of wood and uh, and this heat resistant foam I just bought on Amazon it was not too expensive anything that you have that will apply pressure to it will work okay so Kydex has a certain temperature that you want to heat it up to and you can shoot a temperature gun at it or um, you know set it to a specific degrees whenever you're setting your oven but as long as it's pliable like this and it moves around it's it's pretty much ready so you just sandwich it in there or if you're making a taco style then you fold it over make sure it doesn't move too much in those and then Put your clamps on and apply a little bit of pressure the more pressure you have the deeper the uh, impression will be all right these are the guidelines for the eyelets that we'll put in and i put mine three eighths of an inch away from the blade and the choil and then I'll put a straight edge and see what looks straight off of the shadow that's casting off of the impression. Once I do that, I'll go the same width from here to here, down here, and I'll go the, the same distance to this point and draw a line. And then at that point, I know that it's all symmetrical. So what I've done, you can see that I put some eyelets in the corners because I know that this is going to be cut off and this just helps me lay it flat whenever I'm trying to drill each hole as well as it lines it up perfect every single time even if I drop it or if the clips fall out or if it comes apart or I have to take it apart to clean it out I know that it's going to go back exactly the same every time I have these uh, pocket clips here that the spacing on the holes are a half an inch apart so I measured these to be a half an inch apart as well and I did four because if you wanted to move it up and down you could and I've got this set up temporarily just to give me something to get working um, but these things are also made out of brass right here and then they're coated with whatever kind of material that you want so the only thing that you have to do on this is when you're setting them in and you go to press them down and you can do them by hand too you don't have to do it with a press but you want to keep this level you don't want to have it 
crooked because that will mess it up and if the eyelet is too big for the material that you're using it will actually split whenever you press it down it'll split just a little bit of it so just make sure that your center and this is level and that's it And whenever you put these in, they're going to be a little bit different in size. You've got one there, and then a little bit different over here. So whatever side that you want to have these more finished look on the outside where everybody's going to see, just keep them all the same. Okay, so now I just went to the bandsaw real quick and removed the bulk of it uh, around our guideline here that I've drawn on with a pencil. And that just saves time and saves a little bit of the belts that I use. And then I take it over to the belt grinder to do the rest of the work. Now this stuff sands down pretty easily um, so I'm just starting with a 120 belt and something that's a little bit older not brand new uh, these things last pretty good while whenever you're using it for this purpose but we just want to get really close to our guideline we don't want to get right on it just in case uh, but we'll get pretty close All right, now that you've got 120 grit down, you got pretty close to your guidelines. Um, you just wanna clean off some of the clippings off of the edge that'll build up and it'll kind of melt away. Cut that off to see where you're at. And, uh, and you can see like right here, it's not perfectly uh, oval or rounded. And uh, those are the things that you wanna look at. Maybe you can make some more guideline marks and somewhere to go from now. And then you can keep going to the next grit which would be 220 and then 320 and as far as you want to go okay it's starting to look a little bit better um, but right here where we were talking about where the retention is going to be we want to be really careful not to go too far because if you take off too much material then you'll have to start all over but you can always take off more Okay, we're done with 320 grit on the belt grinder. And uh, I slowed it way down as on minus 20 hertz right now. And I wanna go really slow because this Kydex is just plastic material and it will remove really fast. If you go too far, you've gotta start over again. So just to show you what it looks like at 320. Okay, let's get a closer up view on what we're talking about with the retention. So the impression of the knife, you can kind of see where, right here is where the finger groove will sit. That's where your impression is gonna be. That's what's gonna hold it into the sheath. So once we've gone, I went from 120 to 220 grit on this, and we wanna check it to see where we're at so we don't remove too much material on this and, um, and what it looks like. So it's pretty tight on the retention, but not too bad. I also took off two layers of this. I, I put on three layers to give it a little bit of gap in here. So it's not too tight, but I took off two. I left one just to protect the uh, finish of the blade. But one thing I am seeing is that the front of the knife is hitting just a little bit on this. Now we could either flare this out just slightly with a heat gun or we can remove some more material that's totally up to you I think that it feels better whenever you have somewhere to place your thumb to push it out 
of the sheath that's behind where your pointer finger is. So I think what I'll do is take a heat gun to this to flare it out slightly and I'll keep working on my retention here and finish up the edges. All right, while this is heating up, I went ahead and took the burrs off with a uh, razor blade from inside, and there's gonna be dust in there too. And what you can do is take an air compressor or something like that and just blow some air inside and then kind of hit it on something. You're not gonna mess this up because it's a really tough and we're not at the final grit progression either so just hit it real hard and most of that stuff will come on out of there you don't want to overheat it because it'll change the shape of the entire sheath so i just keep moving it around and once it starts feeling warm to the touch you can kind of move it with your fingers I just want to make sure that that front of the handle is not getting caught up here that's it I went ahead and took it down to 400 grit on the belt sander and uh, at this point I'm gonna just do hand sanding I'm gonna do 600 grit just to get all these marks out and make sure this is nice and rounded so it's not gonna scratch up the knife when it goes in and then we'll just put it on the buffing wheel and it'll be done and we're pretty much done we, I came through with a q-tip and cleaned the inside of these and then I got a gloss finish off of the buffing wheel with a little bit of compound on there and this rounded out nicely I will have to clean it off just a little bit more with some fabric maybe just rub it on your jeans or something um, yeah I think it looked good stick around and I'll show you the close-up on this that's it we're all finished with the kydex sheath for this knife fits in there perfect I love the color. I sanded the eyelets down just a little bit to give it like an antique vintage look. Um, that's what I like. You can do whatever you want to. And I'll put these belt clips on either side so you can hook it to maybe a strap for your book bag or a belt or you can put them sideways. It's all up to you and just have some fun with it. If it doesn't turn out right, then throw it in the trash and start over. This Kydex material is pretty cheap, so it's pretty cool what you can do with it, and it's very durable. If you have any tips for how I can improve my methods, just leave a comment down below. If you like the stuff that I make, then don't forget to follow me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Tradition Company. And check out another video or pictures that I have where I make wallets, belts, leather sheaths, Kydex sheaths, more knives. And come on back and see us.